So today, um, we have uh, a company that probably most of you have heard of. Um, and if you haven't, you will today. What you probably don't know is how successful it was, it is, and uh, what it took to get it there. So how many of you are consumer-facing internet uh, or mobile companies? Raise your hand. Okay, how many of you have scaled your business over a million users? Good, over five million. Okay, it gets harder, right? So uh, I'm not gonna I'm not gonna share all the stats. Hopefully you will, Gilad. But probably one of the the greatest internet uh, consumer success stories ever in the history of Israeli high tech is My Heritage. And the founder and CEO Gilad Yafet is here today, and I've asked him to uh, to give a talk about the founding of the company, uh, the lessons learned, some advice he has for us in building our own consumer internet companies. Um, and when I was writing his bio, I sent it to him ahead of time, and he edited it. He, he thought I was being a little bit, I was embellishing too much. Um, I know Bilad uh, since 1997, when uh, him and I were working at BackWeb. We spent five years together working at BackWeb. Um, and at pretty much every company, there's either like the mastermind visionary strategist, or the execution-oriented guy who tachless does it all and does everything, right? Rarely is it the same person. And Gilad is one of those people. And it is extremely rare to find where the smartest guy in the room from a strategy and business perspective is also the most technical tachless guy for getting stuff done and building stuff. And Gilad has found a way to take a passion of his and his talent and turn it into an amazing company and I'm so honored that he's coming to talk to us about it today. Gilad Yafet, founder and CEO of MyHeritage. Okay, thanks very much, Jerome. That's too kind. I don't believe every word he said. So thank you all for coming tonight. I really hope it will be interesting for you. I'll talk about my adventure in uh, founding a consumer internet startup in Israel. The very, very hard time I had raising money and uh, growing it into a huge company. I hope it will be inspiring for some of uh, the entrepreneurs here who are also having difficulties. I'll tell you a bit about my heritage to give you context, tell you about the history of founding the company, and then, as Jerome said, I will share some lessons learned and, and give some advice um, from my experience. Um, very, very briefly, I am a graduate of the Technion in uh, computer science, and then I spent nine years with BRM as a software developer, and then an antivirus expert, and then I worked at BackWeb as a developer, architect, product manager, and um, this is basically it. But what I'm most proud of is actually what I did 20 years earlier. Play you a little video. This was developed by me on the spectrum. Hands up who is using the spectrum here. Very good. So this, is, this was coded in assembly, uh, I don't know, 24, 25 years ago. There were almost no developers in Israel, so we called ourselves the Israeli team. And this was written overcoming great obstacles in the, uh, in the spectrum, all in assembly. The core design is mine. This, this is introducing the, the three family, the three group members, and we had a great time doing this. Um, I'll send a deck probably later so you can watch the whole thing. There's some missiles blowing up the world, etc. But I'll move on. So this is very, very early stuff. Now uh, tonight I'm going to talk about the founding of my heritage and I'll be uh, talking about my personal experiences, but I want to emphasize that nothing would have been possible without the great team of people that uh, I hired. And I'm very fortunate to have fantastic folks um, at the My Heritage family that you can see here. Uh, since the photo was taken, we're almost double now. So we're about 135 folks today. So the credit is all theirs. My Heritage is a platform for family history. And genealogy is the um, more scientific name of the research of your family history. Genealogy is a very, very popular hobby. 
millions and millions of people all around the world are interested in their roots, and they want to start a journey of self-discovery to find out where their families came from and learn more about themselves along the way. It's uh, common and popular all around the world. And what these people are doing, they are researching their roots, they're finding who their ancestors and relatives were, they're building a family tree, they are preserving the family history for future generations, and they are sharing everything with their family members and with their friends. So this is what genealogy is all about. And the target audience is mostly older than in regular social networks. Like target is 40, people 40 plus, 50, 60, even 80 plus. This is a stage in life where people become more interested in their family history. Our vision at MyHeritage is to make family history mainstream, make it accessible and enjoyable for everyone. Because probably in every one of your families there is some fanatic who loves the family history and some other people who are interested. But we want to make it accessible for everyone and we want MyHeritage to be the place where everybody knows that this is where they will find their family history. We started with uh, C++ software, actually, uh, for Windows. We expanded then into um, a website, which is a social network that is synchronized with the software. We added very powerful tools for research and technologies for matching. <coughs> the technologies for matching are the most power powerful feature of MyHeritage because they uh, implement the product network effect. This is something you really want to have in your companies. Um, it's a phenomenon where the more users and data are in your platform, the more valuable it becomes for all the users. And the reason is that MyHeritage takes whatever information you enter and it compares it to the family trees of all the users out there. If it finds an overlap or a match, it means you are related to another person and you can learn from each other and your family trees connect. And you can often make life-changing discoveries like discovering that your grandfather had a sister you never knew about, or that the whole branch of the family that you, you, you thought died in the Holocaust, they actually survived, and they are living today. So the matching is one of the most exciting things that we do, <coughs> and uh, we also have a new technology that can match family trees to historical records. <coughs> For example, we can bring you all the newspaper articles ever written about <coughs> anybody in your family. Very, very exciting. So after this brief background about the company, I'll tell you how difficult it was to build this from my, um, from my home. So I started this in 2003, so it must be ancient for you guys. And um, it was after a few years of hard work at Backweb. I got back to Israel, I got married, and I told my wife, I want to take time off from high tech. I need some rest. And so she said, go ahead, take your time off. I took six months and it didn't work, but I did this. So I spent the time on my own family history because that has been a hobby of mine since the age of 13. And I had unfinished business here. I wanted to find more about my own family history. But I was looking for the best tools and websites and software to do my own family history and I could not find anything useful. So I thought I would have to build this myself and I started working on the tools for my own use. A few years later, I walk again uh, to my wife, and I tell her that um, I want to start my own company around genealogy, and um, there will be no salary, but I will be working at home, and I will be with the kids all day long. <laughs> of course, I lied. <laughs> and she said, go ahead. If this is what you enjoy, go ahead. <coughs> and I thought, I was very naive, I thought this can be a bootstrap. I can go all the way, and not raise money from any investors, and own 100% of the business, and keep all the fruits to myself. <coughs> so with this naive thought in mind, which by the way, some companies are able to do, but, but not me, um, I put my own money into the company. And uh, I hired several good folks in Israel, but I didn't have that much money. So I made the big mistake of um, taking an outsourcing firm in India, which was very cheap. By the way, I did a lot of research about it. I researched who are the best companies in, the, in India, and then I picked five of the best 
and I gave each one of them a different pilot to prove itself. And they all over-delivered because they wanted the big job, so they all put 10 people instead of one. So I got a lot of value from these pilots, which actually is a very good tip for you if you ever want to lose. But I chose the best ones, but the problem with outsourcing the key parts of your company is that the quality that you get is ultimately mediocre. And you really want everything to be done in-house, except if it's something really external and not part of the core areas. So I had a bad experience overall, and we ended up discarding everything that was coded in India. But I guess it was needed at the time. Now, the problem was that my money, my money ran out. I was running this as a bootstrap for um, two years, and I was paying salary for some folks. And um, I took a loan from my, the bank, put a mortgage on my house and my car and everything I had. At that point, my wife told me, are you sure you know what you're doing? <laughs> And I told her, yeah, uh, you know, trust, trust me. But uh, it was time for me to raise money because I knew that I could not continue um, to do it as a bootstrap. Plus, I picked a model, a business model, that didn't have a name back then, but now it is known as freemium. It's a very good model, and I'll talk about it, but the downside is that you don't have revenues in the beginning. So I had to raise money. And there was no tech abuse back then, which would have made my life easier, maybe. Um, and so I went and talked to investors in Israel, private investors, VCs. And I received negative responses from about 20 of them. One by one by one. Meeting after meeting, everybody didn't think this was interesting. Um, I was a first-time entrepreneur. Um, people didn't appreciate that. And. Um, there was no precedent, because you know, a month ago, our competitor Ancestry was sold for $1.6 billion. That would have helped me back then. But people didn't realize, like me, that this was a very sexy area. That, like, you have Facebook today for friends and LinkedIn for business. The whole family is left open, which now my heritage is pursuing. But I couldn't give the examples of LinkedIn and Facebook because they didn't exist. That was difficult. So eventually, uh, I lucked out. I was very lucky to get two fantastic super angels to invest. They were Yuval Rokabi, who was the seed investor of Checkpoint, and Aviv Rice. And they invested together a seed round of about $1 million. And that allowed the company to finally get started. And so in 2005, after two years of being in stealth, we finally launched the website. <coughs> These were very, very, very difficult years. The company, by the way, was named after my daughter, Inbal Genealogy Technologies. She does not forgive me for changing that name to my heritage. <laughs> but it had to change. And the reason it changed was Inbal.com was taken. Yeah. Now, it's very funny that I'm talking about celebrities, because just right now, this is a crazy uh, trend <laughs> occupying Israel. But this whole celebrity thing, was important in the history of, of my company. And I want to tell you about <coughs> sometimes how luck is more important than anything else. So part of my vision about building a family history platform was to really create a community and have everybody working together, crowdsourcing, everyone building their own family tree and connecting everything together so that all, everyone is building the world family tree. The most exciting thing that can happen to you when you work on your family tree is to make it a discovery. You can make a discovery if your family tree connects to another family tree or you discover some information. But you can also make a very exciting discovery, a very emotional one, if you see photos of your grandfather that you've never seen in your life, or maybe how he looked like when he was 10 years old. Especially if uh, no photographs survived in your family. So I had this vision of using face recognition technology for family history. Everybody would upload their photos and tag, tag their ancestors and, and uh, grandparents in the photos. The system would use face recognition technology to learn the faces. And then it will show you other photos from other users featuring your family. 
it turns out that this was one of the first <coughs> inventions of face tagging on the internet, maybe the first, and the first invention of face recognition for the internet. So this came by accident as part of my, my passion for family history. <coughs> and um, how do you train face recognition to make it better? You need a lot of samples. Who can you get lots of samples from? Celebrities. You can go to Google image search and you can type Madonna and you have 100,000 photos of Madonna. Now the face recognition technology, I didn't want to invent it because I knew that there were smarter people who were actually focused on it. So I did some research. What technologies are already available for licensing? And there was no face.com back then. So I, I couldn't get the best technology. So I found the best technology in uh, the part that was uh, in East Germany, in Dresden. And this was uh, a German company, very strict folks. They were building face recognition technology to catch terrorists in airports. So I flew over to Dresden and I said, I'm the crazy guy who's building a family history platform on the web and I have no money but I want to license your technology. Bring me your technology. And they said, fine, bring us 250,000 euro per server. I said, I don't have that money. But I kind of charmed them. And eventually the CEO gave me the technology for free. And I told him, you know what? I will help you extrapolate. Because people, when they build family trees, they tag how their grandfather looked at the age of 1, 2, 5, 10, 50, 70, etc. So I told them, I can give you photos showing how a first person ages, and then you can improve your algorithms for extrapolation. So in return for the promise of getting photos from me, we got the technology. And then we got all the celebrity photos from the web and started training the algorithm. And then I had, you know, like the Petri, uh, the, the Petri dish invention of, um, was it? Uh, <coughs> I don't remember now. Uh, Fleming, I think, discovered. Um, sometimes you get to discovery by accident. What happened to me was I uploaded my own photo and the system had a bug and classified me as John McEnroe. <laughs> <laughs> which, which was one of the celebrities. And I looked at the photo and I said, wow, this is a great resemblance. <coughs> Wouldn't it be cool if people could upload their photo and it would tell them what celebrity they look like? So I thought that would be a very good introduction to my heritage. Let's make it a showcase for the Family History platform. Put up a service, upload your photo, see what the celebrity looks like. So we launched this, and by accident, it became extremely popular. It was very, very viral. And one of the most uh, beneficial things that could happen to you as a startup is that if it catches fire and captures the whole world. So it became so popular that people were doing it, and it was on television on the Barbara Walters show and MTV and uh, all the news stations. People were seeing it, and they wanted to do it also. It's part of personalization and self-expression. If you're a teenager, you don't want to say that you're, you're hot and you look great. But if you said that some technology compared you to a supermodel, <laughs> then it's objective. 